On today's show, we have a mashup involving a 99 classic and a school spirit with 99's release of the Billups era Colorado Buffaloes apparel. Join us as we look back at a legendary game involving Billups and the Buffs and talk about some of the history, present, and future of Colorado basketball. Now, on to the show. Welcome to the 199 podcast. On today's show, we're going to be doing a mashup. We've got a 199 classic. We're going to be talking about a classic game involving the Colorado Buffaloes, along with School Spirit. School Spirit is talking about the design and the release of the new Colorado apparel that we've got. Uh, but first, I want to say hello to my co host, Josh Barnett. Got him down here in the studio. We've got some other exciting things to talk about, too. So I'm, I'm actually pretty pumped for this one. Uh, not that I'm not excited for everyone, but there's just a lot going on. So that makes things interesting. Yeah, man. So, uh, so, so start off with, uh, the website because there is a big, uh, I, I saw it went live, I think what late last night. It was, it was late. Cause I was, I was we monitoring, I was monitoring <laughs> and we were talking about how many hits that were got when it even wasn't around. And I was like, I, I kind of want to see this. Cause I had seen, yeah. gotten a little preview, but it's always it fun a, to be able it to was, interact. It was with a late it. night at HQ, but it was like fun. It was, uh, it was everything that I thought. You know, when, when we all went full-time and getting everybody down here full-time? Yeah. Where you just had, like, a whole day with your boys, like, sitting in close quarters and eating junk food <laughs> and watching basketball and, like, knocking out little tasks nice. and building something big. So, like, it was dope. So Nervous? Uh, no, I wasn't nervous. So we worked with uh, Victory out of Vancouver. So dope dudes, and uh, they made it very, very easy. So big shout-out to those guys. I was just texting with them to – Maybe change something on the website right as that intro was coming. So, <laughs> Look at this guy. He's always, sure, always working. Look, I'm sure mini, that they're mini tired mogul, of me. Mini mogul over there. Shit. <laughs> well, that's great. What, what's your what's your favorite thing uh, about it? Or have you gotten any feedback that you are are excited about so far? No, super positive feedback. Um, yeah, I think just uh, the big thing for us was uh, – just making the user experience better. Mm -hmm. um, so like little dumb shit that I like is like <laughs> uh, check out like flows really, really easy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> stupid little that's stuff important. like the uh, size that's are the sizes that are sold out or uh, grayed out. Um, yeah. So it's just, I don't know. It just has a little better stuff. aesthetic. Yeah. It's just the it little great dumb on, stuff, man. It looks great on mobile. Like I think, I think that's, Thank it's, you. it's weird how much, I don't look at websites on a computer anymore. Right, and I, that's cr completely opposite of us, and we have to remind ourselves yeah. of that because we're in front of our screens. Well, because you're, it's more like a, a work base. Like when I'm yes. when I'm looking at stuff, it's not a browsing. It's, it's, ca it's casual, so yep. I'm looking at it on my phone, just relaxing, seeing what's new. So I think we ran, up. I think we ran analytics that said 85 percent of our shoppers shop mobile. That makes sense. Um, which was crazy, like because. I don't know. I, I there's certain websites that I use for mobile. Obviously, our apps. Yeah. You know what I mean, like sure. Nike app, sneakers app, sure, Amazon. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> fucking kill that thing. Um, but when I would like went like last night, I sat down to order a bicycle. Like I wasn't doing that on my phone. I'm gonna order a bike on a website. Like I need to see it big as shit. That's I need to go through all of it, and you know what I mean. So like That's the old man on the phone. I know it. Here. I know it. I know it. It's like so you're talking I, about offenses. Like 99. Um, if I was a 99 consumer. Uh, you know, where would I shop? I, I, I don't know. I, I would want to see the beauty of it the looks site. It looks nice on, on, on every on desktop. Too, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I, the, I'm old. The blog too, you were talking about, uh, kind of reinvesting a little bit of time and energy into that. I noticed that it had been updated and kind of reformatted and I think it looks great. So that, that's exciting. Cause part of the aesthetic of the, the website for me has always been the storytelling on there. Right. Even if it's the little blurb with the shorts, it's just fun to kind of get a, a snippet of something. Yeah. So that's what I just text our guys at victory. I'm like, 
God, can we change where it says product description to hardwood history? <laughs> because that's, yes. the, that's the, that's, that's the, the tagline. Yeah. That's the, um, that's what it is. It's not a product description. It's, it's, true. it's the history of what that product was. So they're well, texting me back right now. They're probably telling me, to, no. Do you, you want people to feel that too? <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah, Leave like, us alone. It's Friday please, afternoon. Please stop, dude. We were on the phone with you till 1030 <laughs> last night. Please they're stop. They're on that West Coast time. They're fine. They are, they're, they still, they're still at work. Only a couple hours behind us. Ooh, yes. Break, we'll get on that. Break, there, there, there you go. Look at that. There you go. Look at Victory, man. So if you need, Victory. so if you need some website design, you're no for real. Victory. Like for real, Victory was was great. They're cool. cool. They're they're easy to work with. Great dudes. And, That's awesome. And we knocked this thing out in about uh total maybe like twenty five days. To, wow. I know. Like the timeline was tight. It was tight. <laughs> uh, so that we still have some little kinks and stuff on our end that we're gonna that we're gonna improve, but the foundation is there. If I can get my shorts, that's what's important. Yeah, just just in time for the cro- <laughs> Colorado about. launch. Exactly, because we, we're going to talk about that later, but you got some uh, exciting stuff on, on the way. But let's talk about, you said Colorado, let's talk about uh, Colorado a little bit. So tell me about the, the I want to get into the design specifically, because that's where I like to start out sometimes. It's just like, where did you find this? How did you settle on the, the two years? Because Colorado, I went through uh, kind of the history of Colorado basketball well, and there's a, it's long, 111 years of Colorado basketball. Not, don't think of them. And they've had some successful runs. They, uh, they had a, their history. a really long drought yep. there, which was like coincided with our existence, mm-hmm. you know, like 30 like, years. Like, yeah. Like us <laughs> being alive, yeah. um, which is interesting. They're really good this year though. I don't yeah. know if you've seen a player, or I not, did. but they yeah. are pretty yeah. good. I've got that. In. Uh, got that they, in. they actually wore the, um, they wore the 69 throwback. So the 69 team, um, was the last regular season conference championship okay. for them. So yeah. that was a big deal. So they brought those uniforms back and makes sense. And, uh, they have a great, um, a great LD JT Galloway. He's, nice. he's a great dude. So he was really excited about those because, um, they'd worn them last year and I guess they kind of got beat up in the LD department about not having available shorts, uh, that people could buy. <laughs> so we were like, okay, man, here we are. We, like, we can help it you. It seems yeah. like a, a match space made in that we can yeah. fill. So he's, he's super dope, man. He, he's got like crazy good Colorado stories, just like a fan at heart. So I we love, love it. We can, we can, uh, uh, latch on to the, the men and women in those positions that like get it and, yeah. and like eat it and, and, and sleep it and breathe it and uh, all that. I mean, it, like he's a hoops head, uh, as far as Colorado goes. So that it's like fun. We like learn from him. So it's well, dope. I love that about their coach right now too, because he is not, he's not like a coach that's like looking for another job. I mean, not like all coaches don't have to worry about that, but he's a, he was talking to Mark Turgeon before he got the Colorado job and telling him like, that's my dream job. So you got to love like when a coach is aspirational towards your program and then bring success to that program. And he, yeah, he's been awesome for, for Colorado. That's a so little bit different neat. in, in today's day and age. Too, yeah. Right. Like to aspire to a school. That's not most like, people view every, every stop as a stepping stone. Yeah. Like, like literally like there's yeah. really good jobs that people are sitting or at to, those or, jobs. Or just don't want to put that out there. Right. Like this yeah. is, this is a job that a, a dream job for me. Cause you're almost like, Oh, it won't come true. Or if I get it, maybe it won't last, right. you know, right. so to, to put that out there to someone else is pretty neat. Yeah. It, but then you also see, it's always interesting to me because it, it, it backfires on people, um, a lot that, um, uh, that treat everything, um, like a stepping stone. So they get really hot and then they, they go for what is assumed greener pastures because it's a bigger school or bigger conference with a bigger recruiting budget or uh, better facilities or whatever. And then that, that shit just doesn't click when mm. they get there. And then where they at back, back to square one where you could have stayed where you were at and built something that, you know, the whole community rallies around and like been a legend. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's just crazy. Like, do you, do you keep chasing those? Jobs? Like you can't fault anybody for chasing bigger jobs, but it's, it's not, the it's grass gotta be is a, always, it's not gotta be, a fe- it's gotta be a feel thing, but I, I do. Well, and you're arrogant as shit, right? Like, I mean, as a coach, you, 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 you have an ego, you have to, because the, the, the buck stops with you on everything. So you're, you're taking all full responsibility. So you never, you never doubt yourself that you can succeed anywhere you go. And then right. sometimes it just doesn't work, but it's, it's more than that too. It's, there's so many complicated factors into being successful as a, as a college coach. Now it's like recruiting facilities, you know, money, every, Everybody has facilities, 
right? Wow. Everybody has money now, and everybody's on TV. I, I would maybe if you're talking like big time programs, big Power Five. Yeah, if you're talking those those kind. I, I, I don't I think you can distinguish yourself like you once could on the TV stuff and the the facility <sighs> stuff. Just I really a difference, don't because I think about There's this so with, much money flowing through those know, but, those universities but though. even like well, even before COVID, even yeah. with nba even with nba coaches like you hear about like there's just a there's just going to be a difference between like winning a championship in oh, Ma- that milwaukee, owners milwaukee or new york city like I, I don't care what you say like it still would matter if the knicks won a championship if you brought a championship to iu it's going to matter more than winning at texas like there, you'll there'll be a lot of people True. excited about it but but mean more to who? It's not going to mean more to that's you. True. I guess not. I don't know. That's like, what I'm mean. a it's coach. Weird. Like I yeah. just won that shit. I yeah. don't care if I won it at CCNY. Yeah. Like I could care less. Like and I want it. May, and maybe like again, like maybe it's you blend in. You could argue the opposite too. That you blend in more too. Like a, a championship at Colorado would be unbelievable for them, right? Like that's the only one in the school's history. Um, you know, it, it would be it would be amazing. Although that they've been to a, a Final Four, can you know. can you name the team they play, played against and lost to? Hell no. Or any of the players on I, it. I, oh, this is an easy one. Play one of the greatest players, the, the winningest player in NBA history, was on the team they lost to. The winningest player, Bill Russell. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And lost to Bill. Because I knew it was a while back. Because yeah. I was just researching, doing yep. all the product descriptions. Yep. But uh, so we we got to talk about uh, Bill up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that so bad. I know you should have hit that on your board. Know, you should have had that dialed I up. Should, man. I, I thought about getting it. I was like, oh, no, I, I got to do it myself. So, dude. <laughs> so it was funny because as I was researching for like when when we got Colorado and talking with JT, like the 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 guy is Billups. Like, he, really? Yeah, he, he's the dude. Like, <laughs> because he's from he's from Colorado. Okay, okay. And so, um, King of Park Hill is what they call him. That was his nickname, which is dope. I think he might have even had a tattoo of that at some point nice. too. Nice. But um, I never heard of Chauncey Billups. Right? Yeah. Like, I like. Oh yeah. I mean, we were young. Oh yeah, I, I mean, shit, sixteen, and and I probably did like somewhere in Slam. Somewhere or he was on some something because he was a McDonald's All American and all that yeah. stuff. Um, but I remember the name Chauncey just sticking out to me yeah. when 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 Memorable they matched up name. with eight nine IU in yes. the nine seven NCAA tournament. And uh, I just remember my dad telling me, like, I'm like, is Colorado any good? Like, I don't know. Because back then, we didn't get all those games. There wasn't a Pac-12 network or any of that shit. And uh, he was like, dude, they they have a stud. And I'm like, what's his name? He's like Chauncey Bills. I'm like, I've never heard of him. I'm like, like, are, we'll you probably sure? are you sure this is <laughs> yeah. this dude? We'll probably yeah, win. We're good. And that dude put on a show. Yeah. 20 in the first half. Uh, and trouble. Only, trouble for us. Yeah, either. they scored like, what was it, like 15 of the first 18 in the game or something. We tried to find the game so we could watch it. And we couldn't find a yeah. thing. We got to tap into some network, man, Fine. like you were talking about. Someone, someone get a Synergy Sports uh, access. <laughs> 99 is not the brand that I thought it was <laughs> and until we until can we get, get access all, to, all ball yeah, to yeah exactly. We just need to start, you just need to start calling the, the school yeah. and be like hey send us this game. I did read something about Billups though and how he ended up at Colorado like it was always in his top you know whatever three five or whatever um, but there was a story that ESPN. Three, three times he's Colorado Mr. Basketball which yeah. I always think I know he's like a legendary player you know NBA Hall of Famer so it's n- it's not that weird but whenever but he's not whenever in I, the nba and he's not in the hall of fame i know yet, well which is a he, big know, debate too i'm he's gonna he's he gonna has to there. right yeah, he's i guess bullshit there. but I, but anyways like just to think of like a sophomore in high school winning like mr basketball in any Stupid. state is crazy like, exactly i don't give a shit like, like what se- the basketball what? is in your state yeah. like if you're a sophomore you're getting after it um but uh oh the the recruiting story was he was gonna go to kansas or he's visiting Kansas, and Roy Williams said, "Like I'm either giving a scholarship to you or Paul Pierce. I don't care which. Whoever pops first, wow, is is it really? Yeah, wow. And so why not both? What is some, something? I'll, I'll get this wrong, but he was like on the plane to go to Lawrence, mm-hmm. and Paul Pierce committed, like because he was just like leaving, and so he committed. So that was how. And then he wanted to potentially go to Georgia Tech, so he was." Uh, uh, good for point guards getting Not ready to leave to go there and marbury committed mm. and yeah, so it like pushed him and there was like one other that was in there too i can't remember what it was Boy, pearson but it was, it was nice. oh my god and nice they only play the same position so yeah. i don't know like what Weird. the story was there but 
put Chauncey Billups on those late nineties. Really nice with Kansas Lafren- teams? That's LaFrance too, right? I, I don't know. Jacques Vaughn and all them dudes. Yeah. Like yeah, Jared Haas and like I mean those teams were legit. Billups was really awesome too. I know that the game that we ended up watching the uh, the UNC game, and he it's not his finest hour. But I, I watched uh, a Steve Nash game too. They have one on the NCAA, and it's not his best game. But the thing is that you can, if you're watching, if you've seen enough basketball, you don't have to see a lot of plays to know a guy's. Well, the special, '97 right? what UNC was probably Carter Jameson, Shamon right. Williams, yep. those dudes, right? So yep. like, it's a really that's a team. loaded ass loaded team. team. Yeah, they go loaded they go team. to the final final four, I think, and lose to somebody somebody else. That's good, Arizona. So they're. Okay. I think. So that would have been, they did go to the Final Four? <laughs> or maybe they lose in the Elite Eight, but they they go away. Because 98, they go to the Final Four, but that's Guthridge. So was that? I mean, it was the year before they lose in the Elite Eight. Because this maybe. is Dean Smith still. This is but last this, year. This is last year, and then yeah. Guthridge and then yep. in 98. Yeah. yeah the team's really, really talented. So, and spoiler they've got, alert. They've got Ed Coda, too. So That Kansas team that he could have been on that doesn't win a championship, I think makes it in that top 50. Really? Because that team was like 34 and two or something. Wow. Like, and people forgot about them. And then uh, another spoiler is that North Carolina 98 team, I think they find their wow. way on the list too, okay. which is crazy. So like it gives you, it gives you an idea. I, I, I say all that just to tell you or show you that the, 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 the uh, level of talent he was up against as as no not, doubt not a one man show but like the guy no doubt you know like that's a lot to overcome yeah your yeah. your nine seed you know for a reason and it, you, it, it, the, the eight nine so the eight nine game is always like my most interesting games in the first round of yeah. the tournament because well, it's a, a toss cause, up right but it's always power five schools yeah and so it's somebody that gets then at the I'm, end, I'm sitting there I'm IU thinking like year. okay <laughs> one of these eight nines could beat that number one seed in that next round. You know what I mean? Cause sure. it's always like a, it, it's like, so you could have got IU North Carolina, which is blue no, blood versus no blue fe- blood. No in fear the next, either. And, right? and no fear. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, this is why I came to IU to play against North Carolina. Like this is, yeah. you know what I mean? But they don't. So I know we're not going to talk, we're not going to get too deep in that game cause they lost, but we can talk about the first half because they looked great in the first, the first half. They're actually leading at halftime. Like they put a real scare into North Carolina in that game and looked and looked good, even with Billups not playing well, but he hits what I was getting back to is that he hits a few shots where you 100% know this guy's a pro. Like he looks, he's a sophomore, right. but he looks like an absolute stud. Just his, his first nickname, smooth, big smooth. Big yeah. smooth. So, yeah, man. uh, I did, didn't know that, but he just That's looks smooth with a V. He, it's <laughs> smooth, smooth with the B. So he lo- he looks absolutely phenomenal, though. With, I just I remember the, I remember the lines in his hair. Like that's that's the main thing I remember from the IU game. Yeah, was a uh, I'm like man, this this guy's got it. Like so, this this dude's it. So I got a little Billups audio for for you to hear. So so let's take a listen to this. Coach Smith to make history today. Colorado has already made its own history this season. The Buffaloes with 22 victories. That's the most they've ever had in a year. They're being a little bit overshadowed by all of the hype around Coach Smith. But they're an excellent team as we saw Thursday night. Well, there's a spark on the eye of Ricardo Patton when you say Chauncey. He can fill it up. He can run the show in the open floor. He's fun to watch and he can nail the three. As Dean Smith said, any team that beats Indiana by 18 gets my respect. 18 over Indiana. So I remember that game. Disappointed. Yeah, man. I remember that game. (laughs) Uh, A little fun fact about uh, this coach, Ricardo Patton, uh, fourth degree black belt (laughs) comes out. I know. (laughs) Comes out in this game. One of the other things that I loved about uh, watching, I I like uh, picking up weird stuff at the halftime interview. So you've got uh, he gets on there, and the the sideline reporter comes in. They're leading by one point over North Carolina at this point. So you know he wants to be like pumped up. The the sideline reporter comes in and starts asking about, are you worried about a scoring explosion from Serge Zwicker? That's that's where she goes. No. With it. Yeah, I swear to God. What? I'm like, what? Are, what? The, Zwicker started. I know. So but, far, but, so but not far, a scoring so machine. Far, she says scoring explosion. So far, I'd seen two like <laughs> literal sky hooks from him, and I'm like, get him out of. Like, I was 
furious that Zwicker you, was you in this game. You hate on Sinner so bad, I, I man. I mean, it was like, unbel- I'm like, because he's clogging it up for Antoine James. Yeah, but that, Antoine Jameson and Vince Carter, and you got this guy was the game back then, hooks. man. You, the Sinners were supposed to clog it up. That's oh, what man, they, that's what they yeah, did. Yeah, that's what they did, exactly. <laughs> we were there just waiting for his scoring explosion. It was, it <laughs> that's was, funny. It was mind-boggling. Serge no, Zwicker no, no. and scoring explosion have never probably been used in the same sentence ever before. Just, just the offense to for Colorado is what kind of made me mad because it could seem like they couldn't figure out how to um get Chauncey going because they need they needed him I mean he's he was the guy that that made them go and they just couldn't figure out it's one of those t- things where you could feel out and you couldn't see how they could get him involved they were you know North Carolina clearly knew like hey if we shut him down we're gonna have right we're gonna be able to take this and they and they had the the depth to do that they did they they got Coda they got Williams they're just throwing they're throwing guys at at him and then whenever he drives they're collapsing on him and he just and he wasn't you know shooting and you also well. get a game to see that like there there's potential I know that you have a a, a weak build up to that first round game yeah. and then you have a quick turnaround on on the second game um but there's a chance that he snuck up a little bit on IU too. You know what I mean? Oh, Where it's sure. like, okay, this this guy's way better than I thought, or way better than he looked on tape, or way you like. When, now I'm seeing an NBA future, we hope, Hall of Famer for sure, live and in person, and this dude's whipping my ass. Yeah, and then Carolina's sitting there watching that, saying like. He's whipping their ass. Like, yeah. we're not going to take this dude like, we got yeah, to be ready for this. Yeah, yeah exactly. the game plan. You can center the, you know, maybe they didn't totally center the game plan around him like North Carolina did. They they were like, look, we're going after him, you know, and, and right. IU has maybe had a more general game plan. Uh, but uh, funny thing uh, on the video for the, the North Carolina thing, and we'll see if he, uh, we'll maybe get him on one of our Tales from the Bench or Stories from the Starters podcast later. But Fred Edmonds uh, from from the team is in the comments and is pumped about this game because it's his last game. He's a senior on that team and uh, gets the game ball. He 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 led the Colorado team. So <laughs> I'm, Good for him. I, I went ahead and commented on his comment, and I'm like, hey, you want to come on? And he's he said yes, so we're going to figure oh, out. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're gonna figure out off a way the to YouTube get, comment, that's right. You told me about that. That's dope, man. So we're gonna figure out, how to get Fred, out. Uh, Fred on here sometime. That's and, awesome. Uh, hopefully, you get some Colorado gear too. <laughs> <laughs> I can hook him up, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, uh, tell me about the the belt, like the shirts that you got for the for the different teams then too, because you've got a couple different shirts uh, based off the the Colorado and. I, Buffalo seems like uh, one of those mascots that I guess could, you know, you have to go with the West team, but super sweet mascot too. I'm, I'm, uh, their colors. I'm, in, I'm in on the mascots. Oh, their colors are so good and their logo is so good. Yeah. And, and I mean, they have a live Buffalo as their mascot too, which is super dope. Like I'm a big live mascot guy. <laughs> like if you're the leprechauns, Bulldogs. you better have a goddamn <laughs> leprechaun out there. Like a real one. Well, they get like a running little, around. Get a little, little guy, little person. <laughs> yeah. But uh shorter guy. Yeah. The, uh, you know, so we we had to we had to pay uh, homage to uh, to to Chauncey and get that Colorado number four jersey T shirt up there, and then we did the the ninety six ninety seven black shorts as well, and then we came back with the sixty nine uh, white shorts, and then we just kind of did it like a catch all um, Colorado logo T shirt too that in gray that matched up with everything real well, so. Um, there'll be more coming. We'll, we'll get back after it, but it's been a, it's been a good day. It's been a, a fun day. It's been a great launch and, uh, we're pumped to have Colorado and another, uh, another PAC 12 team in the fold. How, how are you feeling, uh, about, uh, the, the vault licensing that's come, that's coming up or that's here, but you know, tell me a little bit about like what what you got just just heading down that road this month and going forward. Yeah, so you can you can go to 99.com right now, and if you scroll down past the Colorado um, uh, header on the front page, you can sign up for our college vault, and we have uh, four mascots there that are kind of blacked out. Uh, people are really having trouble with the February nineteenth one. There hasn't <laughs> been that. yeah, there hasn't been too many 
uh, correct guesses on that, but the rest of them you can get. You gonna, te- you gonna tell? You gonna tell them now? No, no, no. no, I, mean, no I saw no. the just to tease a little more. I saw some shorts associated with that. Just yeah. little, man, are those coming out on that day? Yeah. yeah oh yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we okay. have all the product, which is great. We have all the the product shot, which is even better. Um, and now we're just waiting for uh. We're waiting for those days, man. So, yeah, February 5th, the 12th, 19th, and 26th, a new school every day. And then we'll get into March. Um, got something going with uh, Slam for March, early March. And then you and I get to do our uh, do our thing where we're going to launch five more schools, too, on Selection March, Sunday. March a little Madness. teaser. So, um, man, I, I don't know. I'm excited. And man, I'm fi- ready for March and, Madness. And we, and we smuggle you into the bubble somehow. You're gonna I'm going to get in that bubble. I'm going to get in that bubble. <laughs> Reporting live from well, the it's not. It's not like it's not the same type of bubble as the NBA. Like there should be there. There's there, there's got to be some uh, some 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 crap. They were talking about that today. Uh, for, oh, it was on like inside the hall. Should they play the conference tournaments? I don't think they're going to because I, I always felt like that was a money grab, right, for the conferences. I mean, that's what Knight always well, said. Coach Knight always I, said. I mean, I, I guess the idea was like you need to structure the the uh, space or space them out in a way that doesn't. Uh, jeopardize the tournament basically right because what mm-hmm. if you bring together all the teams from the ACC or the Big 12 or wherever and like three or four year tournament yeah. teams get knocked out because that, that's cause the of- biggest fear right like no matter where you stand on on the corona stuff and the vaccination and the mask and the no mask and the right. bubble versus they're not gonna the let, they're fans. not gonna let you in so that you're yeah I mean it, 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 it would no matter where you stand we can all probably I would hope agree that we, you don't want games decided by it right and yeah, so, like, that was you have the a nightmare gr- in the like, NBA. Like, okay, so like, like Dayton, you lose a series. So like Dayton LeBron last year down. has the best team of of uh, their entire school history, yeah. right? And then that's taken Obi Top in a way. Um, you know, it, once you get to the Sweet Sixteen for COVID protocol, like yeah. nobody wants to see that uh-huh. in like that. So uh, you know, whatever measures you have to take, and you know where I stand on all this stuff, but yeah. whatever measures you have to take to to make it just a clean, tournament. cleanly played tournament, just do it. Just do you it. know because we want the like true champion at the end of it we don't want yeah. the covid champion at or the end or to it. have like a, a forfeit a forfeit game you know that just seems that's that that's the other thing that i worry about is like with the conference tournaments you got the teams at the bottom that just m- might not take it as seriously like you get in the tournament like you're going there to try and represent and get something but a conference tournament like i'm not sure if you're at the bottom you still have a month and a half too care. right so i mean you have a month and a half to see how that vaccine gets gets rolled out and how available it becomes to True. to everybody too and it, does that change the conversation yeah. at all as far as like okay and i'm not talking fans or anything i'm just yeah. talking strictly like yeah, the, the, players the, the players and stuff so for sure um you know I think I think that like a month and a half doesn't seem like a long time, but man, it it, it seems to be ramping up. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it'd be great. Um, I mean, great. I, uh, yeah, it'd make like, every, whatever needs to it, happen. It would let's, ensure let's make it happen. It would ensure. Things I did, I just more. don't want somebody to get screwed out of a title or a final four run because of such a. It would be such a it, bummer. It's a that's a bummer, man. Yeah. But what's crazy and interesting about this uh, this college basketball season. Is your blue buds have taken a little bit of a step back? <laughs> so so this son of a bitch is wide I open. Know. You know do, what I mean? Do you, do you cancel the tournament? Or is no. The, is the NIT going to get higher ratings than the than the tournament without them? Come on, Meyer. <laughs> it's going to be awesome, though. Like it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, you got someone new might get Gonzaga might get looks incredible. Yeah. Baylor looks they've been incredible. My pick. You know they've been my pick from the start from since I drafted their shorts. Back okay, in the listen. Day. Just Gonz- saying. Gonzaga is my new adopted team. Yes. Uh, as soon as I saw Jalen. <laughs> Doug's play. I'm like, yes. yep. And I honestly think they're going to go undefeated and win the whole thing. I really I, do. I, I told, I told I, you that after I watched it. I watched uh, three minutes of that opening game against Kansas. I think I texted you. I'm like, they're going to go undefeated and win yes. this entire thing. Like th- th- that team is legit, but Baylor's so good too. They man. are good. I think they're, they're I finally they're got around to watching them good. like a couple games. I, so. I was, I was this far on, on Suggs. I said that we've got a dog named Stubbs. And if uh, the bulls can draft him f- uh, next year, I'm, oh, I'm, here re- we go. I'm renaming our dog Suggs. <laughs> he was. That dog will never know. He'll never know. I know it's perfect. <laughs> it's meant. It's meant to be. All right, yeah, I got. Man. I got one more nineteen nine moment. Uh, little little Billups uh, action. Then we can uh, uh, wrap it up. Here we go. Matt Carjai, the dunk that tied the game very briefly. Monty Billups answered with a three. Uh, they pressed, gave up an easy one, and then the count. Here's Billups with the push. The pull up for two. John C. Billups. 
Well, you're smooth in your delivery, but not quite that smooth. He's got a great feel, a little flow in the open floor. They've got to contain him, maybe run two guys at him when he's got the ball. His nickname is Smooth. He has that tattoo on his upper arm. Love them working. They call with the man. tattoos yeah, out. Yeah, they did. It's '97, man. Yeah, it's '97. <laughs> you know, it's different, man. You know the era. You, yep. could, you could tell what they were because you only got one. It just says smooth. That's it, probably. That's it. That's it. Remember um, the. Uh, you know, everybody made such a big a big deal about Iverson. I know he's got his he's got his uh, bulldog the, on there. Yeah, with the, the answer. Yeah, but then like he just it, like after that rookie year, he came back and was Boy, he tatted went, up. He went, he went at it, and then the corn rolls and all that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, man, culture cultural Changed change it. changed. Things. He sure did. Yeah. yeah, he did. But it's funny. It's funny that they call that out. Like that's the of that whole clip. That's what sticks <laughs> out to me the most. Like now, now you'd almost say like, "There's Aaron Meyer." Well, you have tattoos. There's <laughs> there's Josh Barnett playing with no tattoos where's, today. Where's his tattoos? Does <laughs> yeah, he have uh, exactly. some uh, <laughs> skin colored shooting sleeves yeah, on? Exactly. <laughs> it's it's so rare now to find somebody that doesn't have no tattoos. Doubt, no doubt. Funny man. All right, man. You got anything else? No sir. All no right. sir. Appreciate you coming down. It's fun, man. Let's get out of here. Thank you for listening to the 19.9 podcast. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, make sure you do. And while you're at it, leave us a rating or review. It helps keep us going. We also have links to all of 19.9 social media so you never miss a release. Until next time.